What's up guys? Welcome to episode 7 of 100cc. That's where I have 100 car chats. That's where we talk about whatever cars we need to talk about while going wherever we need to go. So, today we'll be talking about the Toyota 86. Um, still within the affordable performance car range. So that's cars that go fast for under $100,000. And along with the Toyota 86, we'll be giving some information that we could find about the uh, newly announced Toyota Supras that they're bringing back. So we hope you enjoy and hit the B-roll. Like I said, today we'll be talking about the Toyota 86, as well as some information on the new Toyota Supras that we can find that's currently available. Um, once again, we're still in the affordable performance car range, and today, we're since we're still in the Japanese domestic market, um, he'll be talking more about it again. And so with that, let's, let's get going. All right, what's up, guys? So, as he said, I'll reiterate, the Toyota 86 models. Um, so the Toyota 86 is, like the next version of the FRS. So basically Toyota killed off the FRS. They murdered him, they murdered him brutally. And that's supposed to be the competitor to the PRZ. They literally look almost the same. Um, similar torque, similar horsepower. It's just in my opinion, from what I've gathered is the 86 is uh, a little bit more special, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing here and there. So let's start with like the basic models. It's just called the 86. They come in two versions, the automatic and manual. The automatic starts at 26,975 as of recently. Manual starts at 26,000 dollars, 255 recently. So the engine in both these cars is the same 2.0 liter four cylinder boxer engine, which is still found in the Subaru PRZ. It pumps out a massive 205 horsepower at 156 foot pound of torque. Um, and then Obviously, like most vehicles, um, the automatic will get 20, will get better gas miles. So 24 city, 32 highway, and then manual gets 21 city, 28 highway. Um, there really isn't much difference besides the uh, transmission. So they still both come with the 17 inch twisted spoke alloy wheels. So like the standard wheels. I think they were found in the FRS also, but these are just slightly more updated. Um, cool part is they actually come with full LED headlights with embossed 86 on them so if you look closely you'll see an 86 on the headlight itself which i think is pretty cool you know little, little quirk so that's that similar to the challenger da's where the inside of the air yeah. intake okay. yeah yeah that's similar like that um and with led headlights comes with led daytime running lights and they also have led tail lights with the uh the led outer turning signals and stuff so everything is just all led they made it to where it's brighter it's you know it lasts longer and it's more eco-friendly. Um, other than that, there isn't really much. It's all the standard stuff you'd find in a regular car, you know, like uh, like little uh, small little brakes, little mud flaps, yada yada yada. It's literally all the same stuff you'd find on any other regular car. But the accessories where Toyota tries to make it the little special touch. You can add their 18-inch TRD, which stands for Toyota Racing Development Alloy Wheels. They're all black and they're an extra around thousand dollars to get them from factory you um cool part is you can actually get all season tires for free with the uh, 8 inch alloy wheels which i thought was you know you know nice touch um there's also the package where you can get a bespoke pre premium audio which actually came in all these scions before uh premium auto with the navigation system the touchscreen navigation system so this came in the scions frs's tc's iq's the other ones sorry i forgot the names of the other scions um but now they 
they made that standard of silence, but they made that as a package in the 86, I guess, for lightness. You know, they on their website they claim it's rate, it's track ready. You know, it's easy, but it's track ready. We'll see. Um, in the navigation, it comes with GPS, AM radio, FM radio, auxiliary, Bluetooth, eight speakers, and um. Yeah, that's all that comes in, in eight speakers in that uh, little bespoke package, which is around $1,800 as of today. Um, and then another, cool, another weird thing I saw is um, they actually, as a package, they have a center armrest. So right here, most things that come standard, most things come standard in any vehicle. They made that an option. So if you want to be comfortable, pay us more. Yeah, pretty much, um, which I thought was... I guess, again, it's like weight saving and... Yeah. I guess cost efficiency if you don't use it, whatever. But it's like uh, that's something that I feel like they should just have. Yeah. Like, what like this is how many pounds? Not a lot. No. I guess. But I mean, I, I thought it was a joke, so I I, I kind of like looked it up more, and then it's like no, it's it's a legitimate, it's a legitimate thing where it's like. And for eighteen hundred dollars, an eight speaker system, like there are. Why would you pay eighteen hundred dollar? I guess because it's factory, right? You don't have yeah. to toy with it yourself. But that seems like such a rip off. Unless those speakers are amazing, but at the same time, Dodge has the Harman Kardons for eighteen hundred dollars, which is two subwoofers and a total of eighteen speakers throughout the entire car. Yeah, no, that speaker system is most likely not worth it. The only thing that's really worth it is like the all-inclusive touch navigation system, which actually is actually really good. It's just. The speakers really, really fall short, which is kind of annoying. Um, another package they have is like clear paint packages, like almost any other you know car dealer just has. But it's kind of weird where it's like they come in three packages. So the clear paint package is only just doors, or only just hood, or the third and final package, which is the full package, which is doors and hood. That's it. So, so not the whole body. Not the whole body, which is also another dumb thing. What if? So you can only, so you can either have the doors, have the hood, or just the doors and the hood, which is, I mean, I guess it's like Scratching. more likely to be scratched, but yeah. the trunk as well. What about the, the And just top? while you're, yeah, while you're driving, anything can hit your body, the body of your car. How much is that package? That package. The, for the third one. Third, third one, that was like $500 or $600. But like I said, if you're going to other companies like Dodge, $800, Simon Glass, full body, and interior protection for eight hundred dollars. That's outside and inside. Lifetime warranty. It's like I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's why it's it's, it's a little weird. But uh, also in the package to have is fog lights. Remember, this is only in the base model. Fog lights. So you can either have no fog lights or have fog lights. In my experiences with these new LEDs, I don't. I'm not really sure if you really need fog lights unless you're unless you live in an area where it's kind of swampy and fog happens to have a lot. Fog lights are really, really useful in most cases. So I but like, like, ever since I've gotten this car, right, that's it, over a year ago, I've yeah. never turned on the fog lights. So it's like, I guess it is nice to have, yeah. but if that is an option that makes a little more sense yeah. to maybe separate as a package rather than something like an armrest on the inside. Yeah, yeah that makes no sense. Um, they also have mud guards as a package, so... <laughs> Like little accessories, sorry. You can have the factory mud guards or no mud guards at all. Like and, wheel mud guards? Yeah, wheel mud guards. So they, know, so they know their audience. Uh, another cool, actually, this is actually a pretty cool accessory package kind of deal they have. They actually have a, a phone cable and charge package where it has actual little port and stuff. You can get it installed in your car to be able to charge your phone. And they supply all the cables. So for iPhone, um, what is it? Five and higher, a little small USB C, and then and for Android, lightning cable, and then yeah. the and then the USB C and the Android for, for the Android, and they keep you coupled. They're pretty long cables where you can reach it really far back. They're really good, and you they come with a little uh, cable thing. You set it down and you click the cable, the like cable hole within the thing, so it doesn't fray around everywhere. Which I, th I thought was pretty. I cool. think I saw that on Motor Trend, but my question is, does that mean you have to get that package to be able to charge your phone? Or is it just like that extra, just having USB ports here instead of a cigarette lighter port? I think it's just the extra, because I'm pretty sure they have the, the, the cigarette, the cigarette port. Yeah. Okay, because that's what I'm curious about. Like, if you have that extra package, does that mean stock and you can't charge your phone? Yeah, that's... That'd but be, if you really can, fun. and it's just to have that convenience, that's whatever, right? That's yeah. a luxury item, and if you want it, sure. 
I personally wouldn't get it because I use an actual cigarette lighter um, plug instead of the uh, yeah. And with, USB. and with the challenges they have the USBs up in here too in the yeah, yeah. and so yeah. yeah I mean it's stuff that comes stock but again I guess I could see like if you just want that extra um, convenience there I mean it's useful and it's a luxury item it's not like it's necessary especially if you have other options already in the car yeah um, another thing they actually offer in the, the, the stack model is uh, the base model is the real sport the rear spoiler kind of thing they have like a little 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 lip kind of wing thing going on which, fun fact, comes standard in the special edition. But that's an accessory package in the basic model. Um, it's the, it's like a primary color, so it matches your car color you choose, and they just put it on, which is a nice touch. It makes it a little sportier, you know. I don't know if it actually helps with actual aero, but it it makes it look slightly more meaner than it than it could. I mean, how much do these cars weigh? Not a lot, right? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, if they don't weigh a whole lot, you don't need super crazy like. Final package or accessory is like um, so they already come. Both these models come with like a, uh, a chrome exhaust, like you know it's already there. But an accessory could be the TRD, which is the Toyota Racing Development uh, dual exhaust package, which um, I'm not sure if it's chrome or not. I'm assuming it's not chrome it's to make it look meaner. It's I think it only literally makes it louder. It adds a couple more horsepower, but not even that. It's just I think seriously just to make it louder. I think that's literally the only reason. Well, with a two-liter engine, how many cylinders again? Uh, four. Four cylinder. How's it? Do you really? Are you really gonna be like, oh yeah, when you hear a four-cylinder yeah. engine being louder? I mean, louder. if you really want to do that, if you really want a loud car, don't get the package from the factory. Just wait a little bit and get it after. Or you can just straight pipe the straight pipe the thing you have now. Like, Again, I guess that's the appeal of having it done out of the factory rather than have to tinker with it yourself and maybe mess something yeah, up. Yeah, because there are because some Because if people, the factory yeah. messes it up, it's the factory's fault. If yeah. you mess it up, it's your fault. Yeah, but, you know, a person like me, I don't really care. I like to do it myself. But there, there are some people that actually want all those features straight out of the factory, so they don't have to do anything to it. It's just done in there, straight out of the factory. Save some time. Saves the money in some cases, but like I don't, I don't see the point of that. And other than that, uh, they do have standard little skirts and little little special bumpers to make it look a little more meaner. Other than that, there isn't really anything special. It does have a special '86 badge on the front. Um, that's about it. Those two cars are literally the same. Only difference is the transmission. Now, special editions, they start automatic starts at thirty thousand. Manual starts at twenty nine thousand. Alright, so basically, the, this is the, it's not called 86, it's called 860 Special Edition, and the reason they call it 860 Special Edition is they only have two colors. They have uh, a supernova orange and then a halo white, and they're only making 860 of each color. That's why it's a special, that's why they're calling it 8, sorry, yeah, 860 Special Edition. Special Edition, Special Edition colors. Limited bronze. Yeah, basically, cool part is, no engine upgrades. Literally the same engine as the base model. The two liter, four cylinder boxer engine at 205 horsepower, 156 foot pounds of torque. The mileage is literally the same thing. But here's where it starts changing with the standard stuff. So you can get a 17 inch twisted spoke magnetic gray satin finish alloy wheel. So it's the same design, it's just a different color. Same design, different color, right? Right? Um, they actually have standard LED headlights with the Boss 86 as the base model does. They had the daytime running LEDs, the LED tail lights, but standard they come with special edition LED fog lights. Standard. So it's not a package, it's already standard in the 860 special edition. Wow, I said special edition a lot in the past minute. Um, other uh, like standard things that are within the car is they have, again, special edition black heated power outside mirrors so I guess it's really cold and it's foggy your side view mirrors instead of rolling your window down like a regular person and wiping with your hand <laughs> you can actually turn out a feature where it heats up the mirror and it makes the fog disappear which to I be guess fair you see that little symbol on the corner of mine yeah that's a heater for the mirror I mean he has it too I mean I guess that's kind of cool I'm used to I'm used to taking my hand out and rubbing the mirror and then hoping for the best that's <laughs> Um, then they have uh, the special rear bumper. It's like a special edition 86. It's like a black 
they tell me fancy the black applique or whatever you say it. It's like a black back bumper. That's pretty much it. A little meaner looking. Um, I don't know if it actually adds more air or not. It just looks kind of cool. Then they have the special edition black body stripe. This is the two down the hood above the top. The they, racing stripes. They, yeah, but it's not all the way through like an actual racing stripe. It's like really thin. It's like this. And I mean, it's still the dual lines, right? Yeah, and then little side ones. And then um, yeah. they come with the special edition aerodynamic underbody panel. So it has an underbody panel for more aero. Yeah, right, 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 right. And like I said, I'll reiterate, it only comes in two colors, Supernova White or, no, sorry, Halo White or Supernova Orange, right? Which, I guess those are pretty cool names, actually. They're actually pretty vibrant. The white is a different kind of white, and the orange is a kind of different orange. But that's the only thing different. Like, all the, other spe all the standard stuff that came in the basic, it's just kind of upgraded in the 860 Special Edition. And now, here's the um, accessories. So, they still have the bespoke premium audio with navigation, which... I guess if you get in special edition, I feel like it should be somewhat standard, some sort of something, but they made it in packaging. But keep in mind, it's still a track ready car for a Toyota. And again, I mean, I guess you get the fog lights and whatever stock, and yeah, and the the mirror and heaters. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's all okay. But thirty thousand dollars—that's a big jump. Yeah, it uh, comes with the um, again the phone cable charge package. And then the clear paint protection, who part with the 860 Special Edition? The, cl uh, the clear paint, only one package for the clear paint. Literally the doors. They don't offer the hood, and they don't offer the hood and doors. Just the doors. That's so odd to me. Which at that point, if, at, at, at that point, if you want a clear coat package, buy the car, take it to the paint shop, let them do it. Let them get it lined. Get it a nice, get it a nice package that's probably going to be much, cheaper. How much is it? What, just, doors? just yeah, just the door. Uh, three fifty to four hundred around there. Four hundred. In that case, I think, which is it's dumb. so much money just to clear coat doors. That clear coat better again, be insane. If you're worried about like, well, if I take it to a paint shop, that might mess it up. How do I no. know that they're gonna do it well? This is how you know you're gonna get a good paint job. Yeah, and the reason, if you're still wondering why the BRZ and the 86 look so like, it's kind of, it's because Toyota's teamed up with Subaru to make the 86. So it's like, I mean, it's not a bad thing, though. It's not. When companies work together, you either get a really good product or a really bad, bad product. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. being the, the the Chrysler and Mercedes merge that happened in the 80s, that really went bad. Terrible, actually. Uh, with the Sebring. That Almost was went bankrupt, the, I think. Yeah, it put them both in really bad position. But then you got a Fiat Chrysler, and now look what they're doing. Great things. So it's like, you know, mergers can be good. And I think Subaru does well with their cars. So I think having that little bit of extra push with Toyota, uh, or like, you know, helping their cars push a little bit um, more units, I think that's not a bad thing. And, uh, and I mean, obviously Toyota brings their own things to the market that Subaru doesn't, and Subaru vice versa. Um, that's actually about it for the 86s. Not too much. Uh, they're not too special. Not that fast. But if you really want one, they're, they're great little cars. Like, they're really fun cars. I'll give you that. They're really, really fun cars to drive around. But, I mean, if you want to build it, I'd say go for a BRC. Yeah, maybe. Because, again, it's a little at 26 and 30,000. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Like, and yeah. for a car that doesn't do too much you know um, that being said they are good cars they do handle well they do drive well they're pretty decently comfortable but for $26,000 you could get you could go to Subaru and buy those cars or, or you could go you can get actually better family cars from Honda itself like more better Toyota cars that offer more stuff you know you can get better nicer cars from actually Toyota itself you can actually get like a Camry or a Corolla or it's just the styling thing because the, the 86s are their sports they're, they're sport sports cars. car yeah. so you know they're going to be more aggressive styling and everything so if you want more aggressive styling and stuff for that money again you can go to super you can go to nissan even if you want to or if you are really down for the idea get a miata
really like that look or that brand. Outside of that, that money, you can do better. And I would recommend doing a little, going somewhere else for a sports car for $26,000. Because really, if for $26,000 and you're getting a sports car, you want as much for that $26,000 as you can. Otherwise, you might as well just be gotten a different car. So the Supras, you know, everyone knows the old school Supras. You've seen them in great things like Fast and Furious. Maybe you've seen a video online where he just hauls ass. Or, you know, maybe you've just seen one riced out in a corner down the street or something. Other than that, Supras are great cars. I love them. They're great platforms to start, like, basically making race cars. Like, they're really nice cars, in my opinion. But now, Toyota's is bring it back. They're bringing it back with a new Supra. So, basically, this Supra, though, is going to be... More modern, more sleek, right? So the roof stops right above the driver's head. So like around, I don't think that camera's like right here. Um, actually has like a butt chin roof. They say it's for aerodynamics, right? A butt chin roof. I think it's kind of it's 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 growing on me. I don't like it at first. But it's starting to grow on me. I think it's kind of cool. It is a butt crack, not the roof. And then it comes back slick into a ducktail spoiler kind of thing, right? Um, basically, they're they're loosely inspiring it like a like a. It, it, like an F1 style kind of car, right? Um, they, uh, it's sleek, it's low, like more F1. Uh, the the front bumper and the side skirts all have been for aerodynamics. It's actually pretty good. It's um, other than that, I don't know how many colors or if they have any special editions so far. I don't know anything about that. I do know what a, like a rough estimate. So they're gonna bring like a brand new V6 engine into it. No, it's Toyota. No one really has V8 so unless it's like a Tundra or something like that. Um, it's V6. Um, it, they're saying they're saying it's gonna be the same one that came in the 2018 Lexus LS. So it's um, 400 horsepower, 304 pounds torque. Not bad. It's really good for a car because that's small. keep in mind the Supra is just gonna be two seater, right? It's a two seater. It's gonna be uh, lower, to be lighter, to be sleeker, to where it So that much power, it's, it's pretty decent. The fact you're gonna pump it hard, it's gonna feel fast. You know, it's not a heavy car. It's, I just hope they make the suspension and the tires good enough to put that power to the to the road. Yeah, um, I'm assuming they're gonna put two forty fives in the back, something like that. Maybe it is a small car. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if they were smaller. But just having it tuned properly so that the power hits the road and not just doesn't spin around, loses it all. Yeah, I think. Um, I think with that much power in a car that that light and that sleek, I think if they do the suspension and the traction right, it'll be a rocket ship. But the Supras. These two Supras are estimated to be really well. The price range, though, not so sure. I'm not so sure about that. Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised that they waited a bit longer to put that out. Once In they my opinion, like say, this is a really far, far, far reach. Anywhere from 30 to 48. I would expect maybe 30, low to mid 30s. Reason being, it's a sport car and they're using like Lexus parts, like the Lexus engine. So it's like, I don't know, maybe they might charge more. But at the same time, Toyota is known cheap. for having cheaper cars yeah. that are that are good cars. Like, yeah. you know, like Jeremy Clarkson, you know, famously, if the, the scariest sight he's ever seen was a dead Toyota. Yeah. So, I mean, we know it's going to be reliable. a very reliable car. It's just how much money are they going to push that reliability? Yeah. Which, yeah. I mean, I'm expecting, I think a mid-30s mid would be perfect. Like I said, it's um, a far reach. But with Lexus parts, uh, it's maybe a little bit more. But you know, like I said, Toyota's known for putting pushing value with that reliability. Yes, and that yes, yes, yes. So. so that's about it. We'll we'll see. We'll see. We'll when see it comes out, goes. we'll cover it. We'll see. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching episode 7 of 100ccs with our affordable performance car range with the new Toyota's 86s as well as the information for the Supras. Um, we really hope you enjoyed. Just some quick notes. We missed the June video. Uh, there was no video in June for Cars and Coffee as we missed the May show. And then uh, we will have one this month of July, but in August uh, we will not have a Cars and Coffee video. Maybe um, we'll try our best, but planning's a little off as well and we'll try and get some other content out there to fill the time if we can we might be making more content more in depth of specific cars but i'll let you we'll let you know about that later on please follow us on our social media at twitter uh instagram and it is all linked in the description below so thank you guys so much for watching keep your hands on 10 and 2 as you drive always ignore what i do 
Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. And please be safe. All right, thank you guys.